Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to this edition of Share Views, brought to you by the financial website London South East. Our guest today is Tim Livesey, Chief Executive of AIM Quoted Stratex International, which is a gold and base metals explorer, active in Senegal and with interests in Africa and Turkey. He's here to give us a strategic update. Welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. Great. So let's start by uh, pulling together an overview for us of all the Stratex International uh, assets. Well, Stratex has been uh, established now for about 12 years, and our assets are spread. Uh, initially, the company was formed in Turkey, uh, based on some license in Turkey, and was spread into Africa, both West and East Africa. So it was gold in Turkey? That we, gold and copper in Turkey initially. Roots? Yeah, that was the roots. And um, those projects, we still have project, projects in Turkey. Um, the majority of our Turkish ground is either in joint venture or earning, and we have royalties and uh, uh, NSRs on NSR royalties on most of those. We have some licenses still in Turkey, which are in the process of, of uh, being vended to partners. Um, in West Africa, as you mentioned, the Dalafin license in Senegal has been our most recent um, successful uh, vend to a, a mid-tier mining company, I'm Gold. Um, and we have shareholdings. And you're quietly pleased other, with that one. So why, are you, why are you quietly pleased with that? Iron Gold is, is a fantastic uh, Canadian mining success story. It's, uh, it's done some really good work in West Africa, uh, Suriname in Canada. They have operations in Mali and in Burkina Faso. And um, they have agreed to come in on an earning on our uh, license, which is contiguous to one of their exploration projects at Boto where they have two and a half million ounces of gold at about a gram and 1.6 grams. So, um, so you feel as though you're punching above your weight a little bit? I, I wouldn't say we're punching above our weight. I think, I think it's a good recognition that um, Stratex's exploration strategy has identified ground which is prospective. And that ground and the work that we've done on that ground has attracted the likes of IM Gold uh, to come on board. Tim, you joined, uh, Strat is it Stratex or Stratex? Stratex. Stratex. You joined Stratex in March. Yes. What's your strategy going to be, Tim? <laughs> uh, well, we, we're basically aiming to build on the core values of the company, which originally were African and European time zone focused, um, gold, copper, uh, typically our targets, um, project generator type model, identify new areas, get into new areas. Um, develop new uh, resource uh, targets in those areas and then if the projects are sufficiently uh, robust move them up into groups like IM Gold as a mid-tier uh, through earnings maintain a minority position thereby putting off any costs any future sort of funding issues for for Stratex if the projects are not uh, really ideal for Stratex to develop um, or for us to find a, a larger partner for, then to find a local partner who can give us some value back for them somehow. Um, we've been very successful in doing that with uh, some of our licenses in Turkey. And um, basically to, to keep the turnover on licenses rapid. Um, it's very easy to become stale on, on pet projects. So what will you um, be doing that's a wee bit different than before? I could chuck in Crusader <coughs> at this point, because that, that was becoming a, uh, becoming a, a producer, and that, I presume, yes, is not, yes. not uh, Crusader, what Stratex is going to be. The Crusader deal, uh, which was proposed last year and would have taken Stratex out of the African-European time zone into Brazil, um, and would have taken Stratex into more advanced stage projects, um, was uh, there was some pushback by uh, about half of the shareholders of Stratex at the time and um, it, it was a dilutionary step uh, in the short term. Um, I wasn't in Stratex at the time, I can only speak from pretty much from the outside although I have obviously been able to lift the skirts a bit since I've come in. Um, it was, uh, the perception was that it was, it was going to be dilutive to the share price, it could be a while before that value was recouped and it's always difficult for a, a pure explorer to transition to an operator. The, 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 the typical feeling is, the sense is that there will be um, a dilutionary effect to the, to the share price. Uh, you, you expose yourself to the possibility of being taken out at a lower price just when you're starting to get your new asset up to, to the level of production. So I, I suspect that 
the shareholders that pushed against it were probably thinking along those lines. So what we're doing now is we're going back to the company DNA and we're going back to identifying new areas, um, identifying targets which are um, applicable to the so skills that more, we have. More earnings, more exits from your different joint ventures. Yeah, more, more um, mobility in the licenses. Uh, we have a couple of projects that we're going to be looking to bring in in the very near future as part of the new strategy. Are you telling me something new here, Tim? Uh, this is something that we have shared. We are, we've shared with our shareholder base that we, we would like to find some new projects. Senegal, the Dalafin license, was our last project that we were running. Uh, since I'm Gold have taken control of that, uh, management control of that, uh, although we have some input on it, we, we need a new flagship. So we've got a couple of really good uh, possible flagships, and uh, we're, we're in advanced discussions with people on those at the moment. And we can expect news flow through the, through the year on this, can we? We should have news flow pretty soon, because we're, we're likely to be, although we are uh, cash stable at the moment, uh, we're likely to want to do some funding specific to those projects through the year. Um, and we should also have news flow from the Iron Gold deal in, in Dalafin. Um, you know, just to get back to that for a minute, if I may, the, the market doesn't seem to have appreciated the value that that brings to Stratex, or certainly the value that we perceive it brings to Stratex. What value do you think it brings? Well, um, Iron Gold is a, a very respected West African mining company, a respected Canadian mining company. They have a very good technical team, both West African and through uh, Craig McDougall, the senior VP exploration. Um, they, are, they, have a, they have a resource sitting waiting to be developed contiguous with our license at Dalafin, uh, it, almost a stone's throw away. So our southernmost... The same uh, infrastructure, you mean? You can share the, share the infrastructure. The potential is that if our Medina Bafe, in the, if the southern part of our license uh, proves to be as prospective, prospective as we hope, and as Iron Gold hope, then it could be a satellite to their existing resource at Boto. Um, and then we have another three or four targets up, the, up through the trend through that same license. So it's likely to get, uh, we haven't had the final uh, work plans and proposals through for Iron Gold yet. Uh, our West African managers reviewing those at the moment with the Iron Gold team. But um, the likelihood is that they'll focus in that southern area, I would expect. I, I, I certainly would if I was in their position. And um, the, the, a lot of these are kind of close to drill target, uh, um, drill testing targets. So we would expect some news flow on that through the year as well. So, mm -hmm. so our new licenses, our new projects should get news flow. The Iron Gold, I would expect, will be a, 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 a smooth flow of exploration, very phased and very uh, pragmatic exploration through that license uh, over the next three to four years. Okay. Well, let me ask you about your balance sheet and to what extent you're self-funded at the moment. <clears throat> so at the moment, we, uh, at the end of last year, we had uh, around about £2 million uh, in the bank. Uh, we have some payments due to us. We have a, an outstanding loan from Crusader, uh, which we're expecting repayment uh, by early May. Um, Crusader have just done a raising and they've got money committed to that and they've indicated they're going to address that as a senior debt. Uh, we have some payments due to us from Turkey, from some of our joint ventures in Turkey. So we have, we have some cash coming in. Uh, the money we have in the bank already is sufficient to keep us running through the year. And this is really the advantage. We, we're in a, a, a firm position on GNA. Um, you know, we, we have a very lean team as it is. Um, so we've got money in the bank to keep the GNA. Keep How the, hard keep do the we have to dig on. to actually get those debts recovered, though? Uh, I think the uh, I, I don't have any doubts on the Crusader debt. Um, I think there's a good relationship there still, and I think that the uh, the commitment from the company we've seen already uh, to come back on that. Um, Turkey, some of the cash has already started flowing, there's some small cash payments. The rest of the Turkish stuff is uh, NSR royalty based payments which obviously only come on when the, when the projects get into production. And um, that depends very much on the speed of the, the permitting processes and so on in Turkey, which uh, we've seen some delays in, in the recent years, in the last two, two years or so. Uh, so they are... Um, Kind of, I, I consider those to be on the back burner. It's a little bit of a foundation. Um, it'll be nice when it comes in, but we're not reliant on that. Mm. Uh, so I think we're in a good, looking, strong position. Looking at Stratex International, taking an overview of the business, it seems quite diverse. Is it a possibility that investors will look at it and, and not quite get it, not quite see <coughs> you've got a major operation there and therefore that's the news flow I need to follow? Mm. 
and think, mm, it's a little bit bitty, there's too much going on here for me, I don't really understand it, the whole business is going to be undervalued as a result. It, it what, could what do you, be. What do you think about that? Yeah, it, it could be. I mean, we have, we have a, a, a diverse shareholding in various other companies. We have 30% ownership in Tani Stratex, which is operating in Egypt and Djibouti. Uh, we have 11% in Tembo Gold in Tanzania. We have 7.8% in Aforo in, in Burkina Faso. So we do have some uh, positions in other companies. Um, some of them are, are at the stage of not being uh, n specifically uh, sort of, how can I put it? They're not material to us. Obviously, the Tani Stratex is material to us. 30% um, in, in those projects is, is significant. And they've had some recent news flow out of Djibouti, which is very encouraging. Uh, Tembo, I believe, are getting back on track. Uh, they've had a, a bit of a period of low funding, and uh, obviously with the politics in Tanzania. Um, they've, they've what, had a, what are the politics in Tanzania? Well, the government pulled back on, uh, on mining a couple of years ago and ah. uh, got stuck into Acacia and uh, looked at reviewing royalty rates and local ownership clauses and taxation and the, a, a range of... Um, financial impacts to existing mining companies. And what a surprise that m mining has slowed down considerably in Tanzania since. It always knocks investment. Um, it, it's a, always a direct impact on investment. And hopefully that, you know, as with most of these things, it tends to be uh, an immediate knee-jerk reaction. And then when the reality settles in and when the, when the parties come to the table and negotiate and discuss what's appropriate and what is the best thing for the mining industry in that country at the time, um, the sense seems to, to float to the surface eventually. It's just you have a short-term uh, struggle, shall we say. Are you through your struggle in Tanzania, do you think? Uh, I think Tembo's through its struggle. I think, I think Tanzania is, um, is going to be turning around in the next year or two, uh, which is an opportunity for anybody who's, who's weathered that storm to, to build on, uh, on where they are. And let's, final question, what does 2018 hold for Stratix International? A uh, lot of activity. Uh, some new licenses, some new projects, uh, possibly some new countries. Can't go into detail on that, obviously, at the moment. Um, we will be doing some raising based on some of those projects, but the raisings will be specific to the projects. As I mentioned, our GNA basis is pretty much covered by, by the money we have in, in hand. Um, consolidation of what we already have, which is something that was started by the team before I came in in March. So continued consolidation. Um, we have already... The company's already been through a, a significant phase of uh, cost rationalisation. We are a very lean team, so we'll, uh, we'll be developing on uh, our new targets and hopefully bringing in some more partners. And obviously waiting to see success in Tani Stradex's assets in East Africa and through IM Gold's projects in, uh, in Senegal. Tim Livesey, CEO of Stratex International, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. That was fascinating. Thanks very much. Really very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, if you enjoyed that and you want to see other interviews like that, why don't you subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel for more interviews like this one. Thank you very much indeed.